Racist fans of James Bond are threatening to boycott the franchise if the actor Aaron Taylor Johnson, who is Jewish, is awarded the role. Daniel Craig is still stood down from it, and Aaron Taylor Johnson is the person who is uh, in the frame for it, certainly. We know that he has been given uh, perhaps an overture from Barbara Broccoli, who is the producer, but we don't know whether he's accepted the role. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Gary Mond, who is chairman of the National Jewish Assembly. Gary, the hashtag boycott James Bond has been widely shared on X, formerly known as Twitter. Fans have fumed at producers writing, really bad timing with Israel committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, uh, factual point, they're not. Shame on you. I hope your company collapses. Boycott Bond. Free Palestine. I won't buy a ticket for any of its movies. We'll boycott it all. Uh, this is just anti-Semitism, pure and simple. Yes, there's two completely separate issues at stake here. Firstly, this reminds me of the BDS campaign, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign, that's been going on against Israel for the last 20 years or so. It has spectacularly failed. Israel has done exceptionally well economically, culturally, businesses, sport and so on in that time period, and this will fail as well. Indeed, I'm not particularly a James Bond fan myself, but I'm going to make a point of going to see James Bond films if he actually uh, takes the role. From Mond to Bond. <laughs> it's Indeed. interesting in this one, actually, because we have a number of businesses that have been uh, boycotted. McDonald's, for example, again, stupidly, because uh, McDonald's, which is a franchise, which is not McDonald's overall, it's, it's owned by uh, Israeli businesses giving uh, people, Israeli military people discounts and so on. And people in this country have been boycotting McDonald's as a result. They just need to inform themselves that those are not, even if you wanted to boycott it, they're not doing it for the right reasons. Essentially, I mean, Starbucks in some uh, cases has been boycotted as well. I mean, where do we draw the line? Where do these people draw the line here? It just seems to be totally uh, totally nonsensical. Well, I think they're... And also, you can't hold, hold an actor um, responsible for the, the actions and of Israel, actually, not even Israeli. There's actually an amusing part to this. There's Daniel Craig, the current James Bond. His wife is Rachel Weisz, who's Jewish. Yes. Um, but the whole point is, I, I just think that we give this all far too much publicity yes. uh, in terms of uh, this business being boycotted and that event being boycotted. They're failures. They have failed for 20 years. They will carry on failing. Of course, the second point much is, of course, the bigger picture of anti-Semitism. And I'm afraid that we do have these three main classes of anti-Semitism, which we're all merging together at the moment. That's far-right anti-Semitism, uh, far-left anti-capitalist anti-Semitism, and, of course, fundamentalist Islamic anti-Semitism. They're all converging at the moment uh, to attack Jewish people. In terms of that attack, uh, how under attack do Jewish people feel and what can people who aren't Jewish, like me, do to help Jewish people and to stand up for them and to help them without being patronising, but actually just to, to be good citizens? The simple issue is to buy from Jewish and Israeli businesses wherever you can. That's the direct answer to your question. But the answer, how much under attack are we? I think to a growing extent, there are many, many Jews in Britain who are fearful. My own organisation, the National Jewish Assembly, held a debate on whether the Jewish community's got a future in the UK long term. Goodness with me. 150 people attending. And we had 30% yes, 43% no, 27% undecided. That's really, really worrying, my goodness, yeah. that people just do not feel, Jewish people just do not feel welcome in this country. I think, yeah, absolutely. We're feeling less and less welcome. Mm. Uh, and certainly uh, some of the uh, initiatives at the United Nations, um, where Britain is far from being supportive of Israel when it should be, uh, are also of considerable concern to many Jewish people. We, we've certainly as they are of concern to non-Jews for that matter. We, absolutely, we've talked about that throughout the programme as well. I want to ask you about another matter. We've seen this video, and it's only a partial video. This is about British authorities investigating the UK, are, are investigating the UK's border forces treatment of two Israeli brothers. They survived the supernova music festival massacre, the 7th of October, uh, attacks by, uh, by Hamas terrorists and uh, they were detained at Manchester Airport. I just want to look, now this is only a partial video, we can't really hear what some of the people are saying, but it's absolutely clear that the border force officer wasn't, let's, let's put it mildly, very nice to them. Let's have a look at this. We need to conduct something. Do to Nobody's this saying country. that. Nobody has said that once. So knock the attitude off. Okay. We've made the decision and you're coming in. So just let us do the checks we need to do and keep quiet. Look at me. Okay, you clear with that? Good. We're the bosses, not you. All right. 
So this is a complaint by another Jewish organisation, not Gary's organisation, it must be said. Uh, the Council's chief, chief, Mark Levy, said the Israelis were stopped at the airport after border uh, guards noticed their passports and asked them why they were coming to Manchester. When they responded that they'd be invited to tell their stories to the local Jewish community, the officers said they would be questioned, apparently. Now, we don't have the full facts on this, Gary, and we need to be really, really careful about this. Yes. But what do you think? in terms of your well, I, initial I at, impression? I look at the big picture, and Israelis have been coming to Britain in my time, I'm 64 years old, they've been coming to Britain all my lifetime. I don't believe there's been a single case of an Israeli coming to this country who's ever caused a problem. One cannot say the same thing for, for people from certain other nationalities. So I think the big picture is, why? Mm. Um, we haven't got the full facts, so I don't know exactly what was said, but it does seem a little bit heavy-handed uh, if, if, if what uh, Mark Levy is saying uh, is correct. Yes, well, well, we'll continue to monitor this, and when we get the full facts on this, of course, we will talk about it. Sophia, it's an interesting one, just going back to the James Bond mm -hmm. controversy, that even the fact that someone being considered for this role, who hasn't even been given the role of James Bond uh, yet, Aaron Taylor Johnson, the very fact that he is Jewish has meant that people are ha getting this, this, this hashtag, hashtag boycott James Bond. It, it just seems horrendous and deeply, deeply anti-Semitic. It's despicable that somebody is being held accountable for actions of a nation of which they do not live in. Um, and also, we've seen a very worrying rise in anti-Semitism across the country since the 7th of October. Um, and some of it has been subtle. This is not subtle. This is incredibly emboldened. This is people who are feeling they can act with impunity. There's no fear that they will be called out even as racist or have that kind of backlash which against them. They feel like they are moving with the mood of the country. They are absolutely not moving with the mood of the country. Most people want to support um, Jewish people in this country. And it's despicable that this actor is being called for boycotts against because of something that he can't control. Gary? Yes, Sophia's correct. This is classic anti-Semitism. It doesn't matter whether you support everything Israel's doing or you don't support everything Israel's doing. To actually try to hold a single Jewish person to account for the actions of Israel is absolutely classic anti-Semitism. There's no two ways about it. And the logical, well, it's, it's totally illogical, but I mean, are people never going to watch another Steven Spielberg film because he's Jewish? I mean, it is just so utterly ridiculous. Of course it's are so, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, just pe people have, have no logic or sense Actually, in all of this. these type of events tend to boost audiences, right. not restrict them. Well, I'll certainly be going to see James Bond anyway. Are you looking forward to the next film, Gary? Yes, certainly. Excellent stuff. Um, Sophia, uh, on the border force issue, we don't have the full facts here. It does seem to be some level of heavy-handedness there. There does, but as you said, it's hard to hear what the other side of the conversation yeah. was or how that conversation led up to the clip that we've seen. So I want to see more about what's happened. Um, but as has been said, you know, those who come to this country from Israel um, have brought incredible wealth of expertise, of cultural enrichment, of community civic participation, and they are very welcome here and they should continue to be welcome here. Well, thanks, Sophia, and also thanks to Gary as well. The name's Mond, Gary Mond. I appreciate you <laughs> yeah. coming into the studio.